Okay, so we're going to start by mixing my colors, my natural colors for the cedar wood soap that we want to make. And this first one, I've never used this color before. Um, it's pink Brazilian clay and it's from Rainforest Chica. So I have used Brazilian clays and I've used pink clays, but never this particular one. So it, we'll see what color that turns. Um, so I'll just mix that together. And it's mixed in like um, all of these that I'm going to be showing you. They're all mixed in canola oil. I have like a one-to-one -one ratio by volume, not weight of oil to clay. Or in, um, like in this case, it's the black Brazilian clay from Rainforest Chica. And then I've got just organic cocoa powder um, and canola oil. I'm just going to go ahead and mix those until there are no clumps. So now I'm pouring the alternating soap colors down the side of this larger pouring pitcher. Um, I'm pouring it down the side to kind of break the fall of the soap so I can keep all the layers one on top of the other. Um, this, so if I were to just pour it in without hitting the side, the colors may um, blend together and drop to the bottom. And I'm trying to keep them more defined and separate. So that is the purpose for that. Now before we pour into my mold, I just wanted to show you uh, what I'm going to be using. It's just this piece of cardboard and I, I just put some like packaging tape on it just to help, just in case like the oil from the soap would absorb in the um, cardboard. I don't like that. So I covered it with tape so to prevent that and I'm just going to put it in my mold just like this and then I'm just going to be pouring pouring my soap batter like back and forth back and forth and then once I'm done doing that I'm going to be refilling this and pouring more soap um, so I'll be end up pouring two of these pitchers into my mold.
So I just re-poured into this larger pitcher. So I did the same exact thing, pouring down the sides in alternating colors. I left the cardboard um, tool right where it was. I didn't move it at all. And I'm just gonna go ahead and pour the same way uh, the second pitcher. So I had a little bit of soap batter left and I thought I would make the top slightly more defined and definitive in, in the pattern. And so I'm just pouring very thin lines on the surface. And I apologize for my head being in the video frame. I didn't realize that was so, but okay, there I am. Um, so I'm just pouring like wispy lines. And so I had black, this was the brown. And to make the top a little more wood-like, I'm just using a skewer and going just on the top, on the surface of the soap, and I'm going, uh, dragging the skewer one direction in the soap. Occasionally, if you'll notice, I'm circling it a little bit for wooden knots. Um, there's really no science to that. Just do it as you see fit for, you know, artists or, you know, do what you want or do what you think looks good. And again, I'm going in one, only one direction. Otherwise, if I go back and then I go the other way, it's not gonna look wood green. It's gonna be more of a chevron type look. So that's, I lift up my skewer completely out of the soap and go back to the side where I started originally. Now one of the most important things for this wood grain technique is to cut your soap the right way so that you see the wood grain. So right now I'm cutting my slab into four loaves. And then each of these loaves I'm gonna cut vertically. Um, I'm measuring my, my measurements that I need for my bar, but I'm gonna be cutting that. And then you're gonna be cutting on a horizontal plane. And that's the key to getting this wood grain des design. And so I'll show you all the steps here. So here I am cutting it vertically, and then I'm putting it on its side, and I'm gonna cut horizontally, and that's where the wood grain appears. And now to clean the bars, I'm just gonna plane it off with a vegetable peeler, the, the edges, um, all the sides. It's really not that difficult. And then uh, I stamp each soap. 